Welcome to the city. I'm Anthony Wilson, the Public Information Officer for the City of San Angelo. And joining us today is Sandra Aguilar. She is the supervisor for our Senior Services Program. Sandra, thanks for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Now, you, uh, we have two Senior Services Centers here in San Angelo. Yes. They are adjacent to one another on South Chadburn Street. Yes. Let's start by talking about uh, Station 618, which is at 618 South Chadburn Street. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the programming that you have going on at Station 618. Um, the programming at 618 consists of the fitness program. The, the, we have our fitness room, which is available 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And um, also there are classes available, fitness classes in cardio and strength, tai chi and yoga. Those are available throughout the week, scheduled at different days, different times. Um, our, we also have computer classes available. We have um, games and activities like Bonjour, Bridge, Pinochle, or some card games that they do on a regular, um, throughout the week also. So those are probably our main activities we have at 618. And tell us about the operating hours. When does 618 open and how long are you open for each day? Oh, we are open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Tuesdays and Thursdays we are currently staying open until 6 p.m., which gives uh, the fitness program an opportunity for people to come work out after 5 o'clock. In um, those are the times we're open. And then right adjacent to Station 618 at 702 South Chadburn, we have the Santa Fe Crossing Building. And we also have senior services programs there. Tell us a little bit about the uh, senior services programming that you have at uh, Santa Fe Crossing. Santa Fe Crossing has the dining room, which, cons uh, which is our where we have our nutrition program. We also have sewing, painting, um, crochet, which are arts and crafts activities. And then we have puzzles and bingo, which are our games and the, the games and um, activities that we have there. So, and they are open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. And, and as I said, those are uh, open uh, right next to one another. Is there any charge or any fee uh, for participating or maybe joining the, uh, uh, the senior centers? There's no fee to join the senior center. It just depends on which activity you're interested in participating in. And just some of the activities do have a fee. So just um, our fitness program has a fee, which is $10 per month. Our computer classes vary from 3 to $4 each month. And then our ceramic program, which I also, we also have at 618, and that just depends upon the items you make. So those are uh, measured by the inch, and those for the products that you use, you pay for those. And fair to say that all of the fees that you do charge, I mean, they're very low in order to make them affordable to our seniors. Right, citizens. right. They are very affordable for seniors, and probably you know you wouldn't really find anywhere else to work out for ten dollars a month and have the classes available with certified instructors. And then the availability of the fitness room, you know, it's really hard to find something like that. Well, you mentioned fitness, and I'd like to talk with a, a little bit about that. Okay. Because it seems like our fitness program is something where the interest and participation in that has really increased over the last uh, couple of years. Why do you think that is? Are seniors just more interested in being more, more active? I think so. I think um, whenever they start retiring, that's probably one of their main concerns is being healthy, um, being active. So... Where we have the fitness room, which is an independent workout. They come and go whatever time they're available, and they can use any of our machines in there. And then we also have um, our fitness classes available. So I just seems they enjoy the company of each other and just really getting, you know, being healthy is really important to them. You mentioned your machines. You have some really nice machines in there. Talk a little bit about what you have available. Well, we have treadmills. We have about five to six treadmills, I'm not mistaken, available. We also have New Step, which a lot of people use for um, a cardio workout, which sometimes after rehabbing of heart surgery or even knee replacement, they tend to use those after they do their own medical rehab, they come and use those. So those are very, um, they're very useful for that. Also, we have a couple of bicycles that they can use and an elliptical. We also have um, loose weights they can use while we're walking on the treadmill or any of the other machines that, that you know, they may feel that they can use the weights doing. So that's what we have available. And you mentioned that you do have certified instructors. And again, talk a little bit about the classes that you offer there as part of your fitness program. We have um, cardio and strength, which all the um, instructors are certified. And they um, do a routine which really helps you kind of get your cardio workout for the morning. Then also they do a strength training with using um, resistant bands, 
Um, they use hand weights, they use the balance balls. So they use all just different um, um, different items to help with that. So and they offer them in the morning and in the afternoon for that. Now, most of the programming at our senior centers are gauged for people who are age 55 and older, but you also have some opportunities for people younger than 55 to come and use the fitness room. Talk about that. Right. Um, we are starting up our Zumba classes again in April. Um, they will be on Thursdays at 545, and that's available for the general public at $4 per class. And also the fitness room is available um, during those evening hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's a three dollar charge just to use the workout room, and they can come and use that at their own, um, you know, own workout. I mean, at their own independent workout and use it during the time we're open. Do you see a lot of people from the community coming in and using the uh, the workout room and we doing have, the Zumba classes? We have um, the Zumba classes are very popular. Those are very popular. We some on some a good night we can have anywhere between thirty to forty people in the workout room. We have about about five or six people during the um, week that come and use it. So both of them, I mean, they are getting used. So it, I'm pretty sure just really getting the word out it will probably increase that. So, um, but they are useful. I mean, they are active activities. In my mind, the most important program that you do offer is our nutrition program, the lunch program. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what's involved with the lunch program. Um, the lunch pro program is offered to anybody 60 um, years of age and older. And it's just really filling out the registered, I mean, the required paperwork for that one. And we serve lunch from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. And it, we, we, have a, we have to go by certain guidelines to provide nutritious um, and nutritious meal for them. And it is very, it's very good to see that number of people that come and use it. We have usually around 80 to some of the busiest days, 120 people that come and eat during that time and it's very important for seniors because many of them this may be one of their biggest meals of the day and um, a lot of them may not have someone else to eat with so the the number of seniors that do come and eat provides them a, a social environment for them to come and eat and feel like they're you know not just eating alone so it's very important for many of the seniors here in San Angelo so and you mentioned about filling out the paperwork uh, there's no charge although you do have a requested donation that's of right how much is $3. it? Three dollars. Uh -huh. It's a suggested donation of three dollars for anybody six year over. And um, also, if you're under sixty and you want to just come by and try it out, we do charge five dollars for you know for those. And um, we have people who come and bring their daughters or you know um, sons that come in from out of town and they come and enjoy it with them. So that it, it's good to see them come and use the facility for that. And I've eaten there many times. It's always a, it's always a delicious meal there. Yes, it is very good. They have some you know home, it feels like home cooked meal. You pot roast, you know, um, you know, just fried chicken sometimes. So things like that the seniors really enjoy. They enjoy that home type cooked meal. And like you said, I mean, it is nutritious too. You follow some dietary guidelines, yes. so you're not eating hamburgers and fries. It's right. uh, it's something that has vegetables and fruits and whole grains and something very healthy. Exactly, exactly. We have to re um, we have to use certain. Uh, menus that are required by a nutritionist and we have to follow those guidelines so uh, you're going to get your a good source of um, your vitamins and your um, what you're required to eat each day so it's a, they are very good meals. Now in addition to your lunch program and your fitness program I would say one of the other things that you offer that gets a lot of participation are your dances and your special events. Yes. Talk a little bit about your dances. How often is it that you have your dances and what's involved with that? We have our dances every other month right now. Um, the last Thursday of the month is um, actually where our next dance will be in April um, 25th. So we just go from there after every other month. And it's we have them on Thursdays at 6.30 and, they, and at 9 o'clock in the evening and um, they have a good variety of country style music Um, you know really it the seniors enjoy them it's only a five dollar charge and they we have a good crowd that come out usually about 60 people to 80 and they really do enjoy it so obviously smoke free yes. and alcohol yes. free and but they do have refreshments yes there. we provide a lot of refreshments for them to you know have drink something to drink while they're dancing and enjoying each other so is the music live or do you have a DJ? Um, it is live music. We have live bands that play and um, we, we've we had DJs in the past, but they, they prefer the live music. 
Mm-hmm. Now, uh, talk a little bit about some of the special events that you have throughout the year in addition to the dances. Um, we have an uh, ice cream social, which we hold in August, and it's kind of corresponding with the dance. We hold it right before the dance, and um, that's open to the general public. It's one of our real big, and we make homemade ice cream there at the center, and then um, they can come in. It's usually a dollar for a bowl of ice cream with all the toppings. Also, we have um, we have a summer barbecue that we do in June or July. Um, and they can come and have a barbecue type meal and enjoy some music and just it, sometimes some prizes, things like that. So they really enjoy that. We also have um, Thanksgiving luncheon that we do in November for them and we always have a big crowd for that, serve up to about 200 people. Um, and it's a Thanksgiving meal for the seniors. And then in December, one of our big events is our holiday bazaar and they we sell um, some of the items that they make there at the ceramic room and the sewing room that they get together all throughout the year. And um, they really work really hard all year to get that. So, um, and then we also have vendors throughout the community that come and sell some of their homemade items. So those are just some of the special events that we hold. And I've participated in all three of those and I have to say good stuff on all three <laughs> They are good. I really enjoy working them. Those are some of our funnest moments at the center. So So if people want more information about the senior centers and about the programming that you offer, what's the best way to go about doing that? Um, I always say just come by the center. That's always the best thing to do. You can pick up one of our newsletters that we provide each month. The centers are located at 618 South Chadburn um, and the other center, and one of them is also located at 702 South Chadburn. So you can come and pick up one of our newsletters and get um, just you can have a look at what we have available. Um, you can also contact us at um, our phone number, um, 325-481-2798, and they can call and they can speak with me or one of the rec assistants and just get some information about our activities. We've been talking with Sandra Aguilar. She is the supervisor for our senior services program. We will return with Michael Price, the director of our nature center, but first we're gonna spotlight another outstanding city employee. My name is C.B. Russell, I'm a driver at Central Fire Station and I've been on the fire department for almost 11 years now. Uh, You have to be able to pump the truck, uh, know where all the streets are in your district. Uh, When you get to a scene you have to be able to uh, set the truck up for uh, aerial operations or uh, you know putting water on the fire basically with the uh, pump on your truck, get your attack lines. Uh, help your officer and his hoseman get the uh, attack line stretched out and uh, fan to the front door if they call for it and uh, pump the truck. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, prestige in it. There's a lot of equipment on it, a lot of uh, computerized equipment. Uh, a lot of people give me uh, grief because I like to keep it clean and like to take care of it. But uh, yeah, it is the biggest truck on the department. And before uh, we had this truck, we had the, uh, the old ladder I drove it also. So. It's the only truck that I like to drive. The thing that I guess attracted me to the job was just, just my family. You know, I, I grew up around it. Uh, my dad was a fireman here in San Angelo for 30 years. My granddad was a lieutenant at the old station too for 28 years. Uh, and then I have a brother that's been here for over 20 years and a younger brother that's been here for, I think, seven years. But it's, it's a family thing. I just grew up around it and used to spend the night down here as a child and just love it. My dad was my role model growing up. Uh, I remember one time seeing him put out a fire on his day off and uh, we were just out driving around in the car and some fire trucks passed us and there was an old, uh, I guess it was an old laundry mat or something that was out in the corner of uh, Arden Road in 2288 and this was when I was a kid. And I remember seeing him put out that fire and. That's, I knew right then that's what I wanted to do. You know, I knew he was always a fireman, but when I saw him do that, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. You just never know when the bells hit, you just never know what it's gonna be. And I think that's the most exciting part of the job. You know, of course, the uh, providing service for the customer, for the city uh, is number one importance, but uh, when those bells go off, you're here for 24 hours, uh, you go from zero to 100 miles in the blink of an eye. I think that's probably one of the funnest parts of the job. Every, every bit of it's, it's challenging. I mean, uh, there's days where uh, you might not be driving. If the officer's off, uh, you move over and ride the seat. You could be the acting officer that day. 
uh, if a structure fire run comes in and you're riding the seat, uh, you know, you're looking at potential rescue. Uh, when you get in the fire, you're looking at potential collapse, uh, flashover. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of challenging things. I mean, you could also have to ride the seat on the rescue truck, uh, which involves, you know, using the JAWS equipment or vertical rescue equipment. Uh, we also make runs on the truck as a first responder. We go to all uh, first responder calls. And we use, uh, you know, we have AEDs and monitors and airway bags with innovation equipment in them. Every bit of that's challenging. I think what would surprise people the most about what, what I do and what we do is uh, the uh, being a paramedic. Uh, I've, I've had people ask me before, you know, uh, that's all you do. Is it all you do is drive a fire truck or is all you do is fight fires. And I go, you know, they don't understand that we're also paramedics and that we all have to be paramedics here. Uh, if you were hired after a certain year, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a requirement to be a paramedic. And there's a lot that goes with, with doing that. Uh, we have a lot of medications that we have to use and uh, IVs and you know, cardiac monitors, a lot of advanced equipment that we use, making it on the fire department. Uh, like I said, I took the test, you know, nine times. Uh, I knew, like I said, when I was younger that that's what I wanted to do. And I still, I still have to pinch myself sometimes, you know, that I'm here and this is what I get to do for a living. In spare time, I like to fish, fish and fish. Uh, we're kind of running out of water, but I get to go to Lake Nazworthy with my boys and we have us a little boat. We like to go out and crappie fish or go out to the state park and hike around. Lived here for uh, 38 years. Uh, my dad grew up here and my grandfather grew up here. So three generations here in San Angelo and three generations on the fire department. A good day at work. Probably going home alive. Welcome back to the city. We are joined now by the director of the San Angelo Nature Center, which is a municipal facility, Michael Price. Michael, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Now, for those who are uninitiated uh, with the Nature Center, tell us a little bit about what the Nature Center is and where it is. The Nature Center is kind of like a small natural history museum. Uh, we have uh, numerous um, static exhibits, uh, geology exhibits, skull exhibits, uh, fossils, minerals, things like that. But it's also kind of like a small zoo. Uh, we have a huge uh, variety of animals that we have on display, live animals. Uh, in fact, we have over 100 live animal exhibits. And so we're located on the shores of Lake Nasworthy um, at, on Knickerbocker Road at, as you, on the way to the airport. As you pass the Long Bridge, uh, Veterans Memorial Bridge, we're directly past that on the right-hand side. And tell us about your operating hours. We're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 12 to 5. We're open to the public during those times. Uh, we're closed Sundays and Mondays and all major holidays. Is there an admission fee? Yes, the admission fees are $3 for ages 13 and up. Uh, it's $2 for ages 4 through 12 and children 3 and under are free. But you also have memberships available as well. We have memberships available. Uh, memberships, one of the benefits of being a member of the Nature Center is you have free admission for an entire year. So you can come see us five days a week when we're open uh, for free for you and your household. Um, other benefits of being a member include uh, you get discounts on our programs, uh, discounts on our parties. You get uh, special members only day that we do once a year where we close the Nature Center down. We open up just for the members to kind of show them a behind the scenes tour of what really happens at the Nature Center. Now, you mentioned that you have a huge number of animals, live animals, at the Nature Center. I know you have a big variety of creepy crawlies, as, uh, as you sometimes call them. Tell us about those. Oh, the creepy crawlies are definitely some of the favorites. Uh, you know, we have a wide variety of creepy crawlies, ranging from invertebrate animals like uh, local tarantulas to tarantulas from South America. We have uh, hissing cockroaches from Madagascar. We have uh, centipedes and different scorpions. Uh, we have all sorts of stuff like, you know, different invertebrates. But we also have a huge selection of, uh, selection, but uh, displays of exhibits of uh, amphibians and reptiles. We have uh, several types of amphibians like tiger salamanders, stuff that's common like the Texas toad. But we also have like critically endangered Mexican oxalotls. We have the Texas protected Texas spotted newt. Uh, we have a huge variety of, of reptiles. Um, we have an, an, an alligator in an outdoor enclosure uh, named Cody. 
We have uh, African spurred tortoises that are about 100 pounds that roam the backyard. We have uh, local turtles such as red ridge sliders, snapping turtles. Uh, we have a lot of lizards, Gila monsters from Arizona, uh, desert iguanas from Arizona. We have uh, Texas spiny lizards from here in, here in San Angelo and Texas horned lizards. Uh, and then a huge variety of snakes. Uh, we have every venomous species that's found in Texas, all 11 species. Uh, we also have uh, a, a huge variety of Mexican uh, rattlesnakes that we were allowed to bring back from Mexico. Uh, we also have a, a large selection of uh, Texas natives as well as things from Australia, things from South America. So we have a large variety of uh, creepy crawly animals. And some of these things when you have visitors and when you have special events in particular are things that you allow the public to, to handle. Oh absolutely. Well, you know one of the goals of the Nature Center is uh, education. And the best way that we find to educate people is hands-on. People like that uh, animal interaction, that hands-on interaction and it really uh, broadens the scope of the education aspect of it. Now, in addition to your creepy crawlers, you have some warm fuzzies as well. Tell we do have a few warm fuzzies. We have uh, several outdoor exhibits. Uh, we have bobcats, we have opossums, we have a skunk, we have a porcupine, uh, we have a pair of quaddies from South America, we have uh, a fox, and as well as indoor mammal exhibits, we have prairie dog, as well as three other species of ground squirrels that are found in Texas. Uh, we also have kangaroo rats and ferrets, so we have a wide variety of warm and fuzzies too, not just the creepy crawlies. And some of those are also uh, uh, available to handle. In fact, my f personal favorite is the albino skunk. Is the albino skunk, and we also have Emmy, the prey dog. People love to come and see Emmy. She's uh, very personable, and uh, she's been raised around humans, so she really thrives on that human interaction. Now, you mentioned about uh, your birthday parties, and it's one of your more popular offerings. Tell us what you do for children's birthday parties and how people can go about reserving their Sure. Uh, our birthday parties are two hours in length, and we do our birthday parties either before we open or after we close. That way, the, the birthday person in their, in their party had the facility all to themselves. Um, it's for two hours. The first hour is spent, typically, we do a program on the animals. That's where kids get a lot of the animal interaction, the hands-on stuff. Um, and then the second hour, we kind of turn it over to the parents to do uh, the, the, the feeding of the kids or the feeding food they bring, uh, the cake, the birthday cake, and then the presents. And usually by that time, it's about two hours. Uh, for birthday parties, it's $65, and that covers the two hours. We provide the, we help with the cleanup, we help with the setup, we provide the tables and chairs, and we also provide the goodie bags. So if anyone's interested in hosting a birthday party at the Nature Center, number one, call early because we're, we book very quickly. And uh, second, just give us a call and uh, we'll see if the date's available and uh, we can take reservations over the phone. And what's that number? Oh, it's 325-942-0121. And how far in advance can you book your party? We have people right now booking through the fall. And so uh, we have a lot of repeat business. We have, we have constantly, people tell us, this is our fourth year in a row to have our birthday party here. So trying to get in as a new guy, as a new, new birthday customer, sometimes can be a little difficult. So call us as early as you can. In addition to your regular offerings, you have some special events that you do throughout the year. Talk a little bit about those. Uh, we do a lot of uh, school tours. We do on-site tours as well as off-site tours uh, for classes. We prefer to do the on-site tours because that way the kids can get the whole animal experience. They can see everything we have at the Nature Center. When we do off-site tours, we're kind of limited as to what we can bring. It's very hard to bring a, you know, an eight-foot alligator to a school, uh, but if they come to the Nature Center, they can see it there. Um, but we also have all sorts of other special events, particularly around the holidays. We have an Easter event coming up um, this Saturday before Easter. Uh, we also do a, a Halloween event. We do a Christmas event. We do a New Year's Eve sleepover. Uh, and then we just started doing uh, one of my personal favorites, the Groundhog Day, West Texas style. And that was uh, the first time we had it, uh, or second time we had it this past year, and it was a huge success this year. It was a huge year. success, yes, sir. So, now, in addition to your special events, you also have uh, some special classes that you offer. Talk we about We are those. starting this year with uh, two special classes. Uh, the first one will be in April, and it's Reptiles of the Concho Valley, where we're going to have a two-night class uh, followed by a field trip where we're giving uh, people the opportunity to learn what's found right here in San Angelo. Uh, most people don't realize we have 32 species of snakes that are found right here. And so we're gonna give a reptile identification class. Uh, and then in May, we're gonna have a bird identification class or bird watching. Uh, bird watching is one of the uh, fastest growing hobbies in this country. And so we thought it'd be good, a good idea to hop on board and, and uh, teach people how to, how to bird. <laughs> well, and it sounds like that these classes are going to be not only for kids but for adults and most of your programming is for kids so this is something that the adults can. this is something where the kids where the adults could come and be educated as well 
Yeah, very good. So uh, tell us about, uh, again, your memberships. If someone wants to join and become a member of the Nature Center, how do they go about doing that? The best way to do it would, would be to come out because we do have a short form we need you to fill out. So they can just come out to the Nature Center. Uh, we encourage people to come out, take a look at the Nature Center first before they join them. Just make sure it's something we'd like to do, kind of give it a little test drive, uh, so to speak. And so, but the best way to become a member would be just to come out and uh, we can fill out the paperwork and get you started. Now, you brought uh, a couple of your uh, residents of the uh, Nature Center here today, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, to break these out and to uh, show our viewing audience uh, just some of what they might expect to see at the uh, Nature Center. Sure. Uh, this first one here is a gray banded king snake. Uh, gray banded king snakes are actually world renowned because no two of them look alike. Uh, they all have different patterns and colors. Uh, it's native right here in West Texas. Um, people from all over the world come to look for these every year. Uh, last year we met a, ge a gentleman from Sweden and a gentleman from Israel who came over just to look specifically for these. And so uh, this is almost full grown. Uh, this is uh, as big as they get. Uh, quite calm, as you can see. Uh, they're not rare by any means, they're just uncommonly seen. And so I brought this one. Well, let me, let me ask you about that snake because uh, first of all, you mentioned that it gives off a musky smell, and I didn't realize that snakes do that as a defense mechanism. Most animals do, in fact. A lot of animals have scent glands, musk glands, that they'll use that when they get scared, they try to ward off predators. Uh, for example, if a badger or a skunk were to come try to eat the snake, she would let off some of that musky smell, and it would taste bad and smell bad to a potential predator. So she just views us as predators, so she's gonna, if she gets spooked enough, she can let loose that musk and uh, try to ward us away as well. Now, I'm sure you're asked this all the time, but how many times have you been uh, bitten? By non-venomous snakes, on a daily basis, you know. It, but, you know, what people don't realize is a, a bite from a non-venomous snake, a house cat could do more damage to you than a non-venomous snake can. You just need to uh, wash your hands, sanitize it. Uh, venomous snakes, we won't discuss that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you been bitten by any of the mammals? Uh, in fact, yes, I have. Uh, the bobcats, I occasionally get bit by the bobcats, but it's more of a playful thing. It's not an aggression, uh, but they do still have their claws. And so when they decide to play, it can be pretty interesting sometimes. So, so I'm gonna let you put the, uh, the, the snake away here uh, real quickly. Does the snake have a name, uh, uh, by the way? Gray banded king snake. Gray banded king snake. Not very, uh, not very creative. No. But, uh, so, and you've also brought now a uh, Texas favorite uh, it's what I would call a horny toad. My wife hates that because she always says it's in fact a... It is a reptile. It is a lizard. It is a, a type of lizard. They are they're known as toads, but toads are amphibians. This is actually a type of lizard. Um, they are actually protected in Texas now. Uh, they're much less common than what they used to be. Uh, there's many theories as to why that is, but the most prevailing theory is fire ants. Uh, with the progression of fire ants moving up from South America through Central America through South Texas, um, the primary food for these guys are the big red harvester ants. Well, the fire ants outcompete those ants for food. And so when you remove a food source, you remove the, 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 the predator, which would, in this case would be these guys. And so in areas where there's no fire ants, you still see quite a few horn lizards. You go out further west in western Texas, southern New Mexico, you still see a lot of these guys. But in areas like here where you have a fire ant, a lot of fire ants, you don't see near the numbers that you used to. Yeah, it seems like when I was a kid, you would find them all over the place. And now when you see one, it's almost like a real occasion. It is, it, is a, it is a very exciting ordeal to find one of these in the wild these days. And now I asked you before the show began, uh, is it true that it is illegal to pick up a horny toad out of the wild? It is. These guys are on the protected species list for Texas, so it is, it is illegal to, uh, to harm or touch or do anything with Texas horned lizards without permission from the state. And in fact, you have a permit for this yes, little guy. Yes, we have a permit for this little guy. And so uh, these guys are voracious feeders. We feed this guy about 50 to 60 harvester ants daily. Awesome. So we've been talking with Michael Price. He is the director of the San Angelo Nature Center. You should really go check it out. And we hope you'll also check out the next episode of The City.